I'm a filmmaker who uses smartphones and in this video I'm going to try out the new Xiaomi 13 Pro. When I started this channel my only camera was a Samsung S9 and the curved display of the 13 Pro makes this phone look a little bit like a larger version of the S9. It's very shiny, which looks nice until you start getting fingerprints on it. Because I'm one of those, you know, weird people who doesn't use a case, unless I'm attaching lenses to it. The Xiaomi 13 Pro comes with lenses by Leica, wrapped up in this camera block with these futuristic looking rounded edges. In photo mode, you now get two different color style options. Leica Vibrant and Leica Authentic. In the camera app, in photo mode, there's a button here, so just tap that to switch between the two looks. If you want to use the Leica looks on a video, tap the filter button and it's the first two options, this time called Leica Vibrant and Leica Natural. And the downside is that you are limited to 1080p and 30 frames per second when using these color filters. The Xiaomi 13 Pro main camera has a Sony IMX989 one inch type sensor with 50.3 megapixels. This is a sensor Sony and Xiaomi developed in collaboration and is the same as the one in the Xiaomi 12S Ultra. And by the way, while the Sony IMX989 is called a one inch type sensor, it doesn't actually measure one inch. But in fact, no one inch sensors do for kind of historical reasons. So how big is this sensor actually? Well, if this sensor size comparison image I found is true, it is pretty huge, isn't it? So how does having a bigger sensor make a difference? In theory, it should offer a greater dynamic range, which means you should see more detail in the shadows and the highlights. It should be better at capturing light, which means better in low light with less noise produced. So here's some more specs. The main camera is a 23 millimeter equivalent with an f 1.9 aperture and stabilization comes in the form of Xiaomi's Hyper OIS. So it's another Android with a big main sensor, but is it the best of the crop? Talking of cropping things, look at this. Let's head over to pro mode because some settings and features are only available in this mode. But the first thing I noticed was how much digital stabilization crops the image. Because in pro mode, you can go into settings and turn off stabilization. And now you can see how much extra sensor you get. It's quite a big difference, isn't it? So that gives you an idea of the amount of pixels that you're going to be losing when you have the stabilization switched on. In both pro and regular video mode, the 13 Pro can shoot 8K at 24 frames per second. With 4K or lower resolution, there's also 24, 30 and 60 frames per second available. However, when we switch to the 32 megapixel selfie camera, we get a rather disappointing 1080p at 30 frames per second maximum. So I do know that this is much more of a budget device, but these days I often use my iPhone 14 Pro selfie camera as my main camera. It's that good. 4K, 60 frames per second, cinematic mode, ProRes, Dolby Vision, it's all included. I think it's actually pretty good. Stabilization is nice. In the previous Xiaomi's that I've used on the selfie camera, the stabilization causes artifacts. I think I jiggle it around a bit but uh yeah i think it's nice though isn't it what do you think it's pretty good quality even though it's 1080p so this is the main rear camera now and you can see from that footage that while i thought i was getting some good footage with the selfie camera when i played it back it was kind of juddering and also the audio was out of sync so that suggests that it's got some kind of frame rate issue. And I also noticed it with the filters as well, which of course also reduced the resolution to 1080p. On the Xiaomi, on the device, they play back fine, but once I take it to my laptop, onto my uh, MacBook Pro, which is a very new, powerful laptop, it had a problem playing this selfie camera footage and any other footage with filters on so yeah strange it seems to be causing some frame rate issues hopefully it's just a glitch and it will get fixed i think it's actually pretty good stabilization is nice in the previous xiaomi's that i've used on the selfie camera 
the stabilization causes artifacts. But I think if I jiggle it around a bit, it doesn't actually seem to cause any artifacts. So that's pretty good. It is a bit strange that it's limited to 1080p and 30 frames per second. If you consider this as the, you know, it's got a decent uh, processor, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. It's got 32 megapixel sensor, so you should be capable, I would have thought, of producing 4K footage. 30 frames per second I can live with, but uh, yeah, I think it's nice though, isn't it? What do you think? It's pretty good quality. Apart from the main camera, there's a 50 megapixel f2.2 14mm equivalent ultra wide with a 115 degree field of view. They've also got inspiration from the iPhone with this 2x tele button, which isn't an extra lens, instead it just zooms in on the main sensor. So you need to tap the 3.2x button to switch to the dedicated tele lens, which is a 50 megapixel f2.2. 2.0 75mm equivalent with phase detection autofocus. As well, this is Xiaomi's new floating telephoto lens. The lens works by moving elements closer to focus on distant objects, then moving those lens elements further apart to focus on nearer objects. This means the telephoto can focus on objects as close as 10 centimeters. So when recording video, you can zoom in and out and switch between the three different lenses in one take. So you don't need to stop recording and then switch lenses. There is a little bit of a bump when it switches lenses, but quite minimal. And I would say it's just about comparable to my iPhone 14 Pro. For photos, the maximum zoom is 70 times, but the image you get after about 20 times, it is pretty messy. For video, you can go up to 15 times zoom. The quality of the image at 15 times zoom is not the best, obviously, but it might just be acceptable if you really need to zoom in to get that shot. Portrait mode for video is now enabled using this F button. Tap the button and swipe to apply how much bokeh you want. The lower the number, the more blurry the background. So when I tried to use this in the main camera, I didn't really notice any difference. It seemed like it's not really applying any blurry background at all. I did notice a little bit on the selfie camera, but perhaps this is something that hasn't yet been fully upgraded because this is a test version that they're sending to me and it's all going to be fixed up later. Hopefully, otherwise, it's not really much use as a feature. So you can use this on the main camera and you can use it on the tele lens and the selfie camera. So I went out and shot some video Using all the cameras, I tried regular video mode as well as pro mode. I really like the natural looking colors and I really like the look of the tele lens. I think it's one of the best smartphone tellies I've used. Often when you switch to a tele lens in a smartphone, you do feel like you're sort of taking a step down in quality. But the Xiaomi 13 Pro tele stands alongside the main sensor. In a lowish light, there was a little bit of noise, but it's, it's quite nice noise. Because when you get these kind of blocky artifacts, that does look ugly. But this is more like film grain. To my eyes, this footage has a nice quality to it. The image is clean. It's not over sharpened. And there's a nice level of contrast. And as the light started to drop, there was more noise in the image, as you would expect. And the digital stabilization starts to now leave artifacts in the video. And as it gets darker, the more the stabilization struggles. But again, I would say this is probably what you'd expect from a mid-range Xiaomi. There are still some flickers that you get from the computational features, like dynamic tone mapping, and as well the digital stabilization. 
but I don't think it's as bad as previous devices. If you switch into pro video mode with stabilization switched off, there's no flickering. And I do like the way the autofocus adjusts smoothly. The stabilization is really effective in the Xiaomi 13 Pro, but considering how much of the frame it crops to achieve it, you would expect it to be good. In photo mode, the camera app detects when an object is close enough to use the macro camera and then automatically switches. You can see this red macro button switch on as you move closer to the object. So if you'd rather not use the macro, just tap to switch it off. In video mode, you need to open settings and switch on the macro camera. I think it looks pretty good. And you can shoot full 4K video with the macro as well. And it even supports up to 60 frames per second. So this is the first time I've seen Dolby Vision in an Android, but apparently Xiaomi have included it in some of their devices before this one just I haven't been sent them. So Dolby Vision is a form of HDR video, which includes dynamic metadata. And that metadata is used to adjust each frame of the HDR video to the capabilities of the display that you're watching it on. The thing is you can't use Dolby Vision footage alongside regular footage when you're editing. So if you do see any reviews with shots of Dolby Vision footage beside regular footage, you probably aren't actually seeing Dolby Vision footage. And if you want to make sure that you truly are seeing Dolby Vision footage on YouTube, just check the settings cog, which should say HDR. And if it doesn't say HDR, then you're not actually watching HDR content. So whereas in iPhones it's enabled by default, in Xiaomi's you need to enable it first. So in the 13 Pro, you can't use Dolby Vision with the tele lens or with the ultra wide lens. However, you can use Dolby Vision with a selfie camera. So if you intend to shoot and edit a sequence in Dolby Vision, you will only be able to use the main rear camera and the front camera. Yeah, so I just discovered that it's basically all the 1080p footage has some kind of frame rate issue. So I presume that they will fix that in the future and that the 1080p footage is gonna come out fine. This is 4K, which is why it's fine. Uh, Audio is in sync, there's no juddering, perfectly good footage. Switch to 1080p and it's all a mess. But apart from that, I think it's pretty good. But I still don't think it's as good as my Samsung Note 20 Ultra even, which is almost three years old now. But this Note 20 Ultra really is a beast of a smartphone. Still using it three years later. Video is just great. Uh, but for a Xiaomi, it's one of the best ones that I've tried so far but if you do want to learn more about smartphone filmmaking you can join me on patreon uh, we've got loads of books to download video lessons just started the nine day course for beginners which will take you from complete beginner to more advanced techniques for filmmaking and i've done it in a very simple easy to comprehend way other than that i'll just see you in the next video that i see you in